All right, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Save the Track Bike, presented by Hexagon Cycles. This is the second of two episodes I'm releasing today. It's free season. We're covering a lot of races right now. And yeah, I was going to make this one episode, but it just ended up being too long. There was just too much good stuff, so I split it up. So on this one, we're doing previews of the Fixation Crit series in the Midwest and the SoCal Fix series. So without further ado, let's just jump into it. Yeah, this is Nick with Fixation. I'm one of the founders of Fixation Bicycle Company. Yeah, tell us what Fixation is and uh, when you guys got started. Yeah, so Fixation is a Milwaukee-based bicycle company. We got started in 2009. Uh, my brother Ben and myself founded the company and have grown from uh, really a company that made one product, which is the Fixation Session 700 tire. That was our sort of initial product that we launched the brand with. Um, very durable tire built for the city streets that we're still making today, but we've grown to over 40 different parts and accessories and several different models of bicycle, um, including multiple single speed fixed gear models, as well as uh, steel all road and carbon all road models, and even carbon fat bikes. So I have you on here today to specifically talk about the Fixation Open. So tell us what that is and when it is. Absolutely. So Fixation Open is a fixed gear criterium Omnium. So we actually a multi-race event where you can gain Omnium points. Uh, and we host it alongside of uh, the Tour of America's Dairyland, which is a uh, – 10-day series, Criterium Series in Wisconsin, as well as the Intelligentsia Cup. Um, so we partnered with both of those uh, Criterium races to bring fixed gear racing to both Milwaukee and Chicago. Uh, we're actually excited. This is our fifth year of the Fixation Open. We grew from one race we did uh, with Intelligentsia Cup down in Chicago to now a four-race series. And this year, it actually be a three-race Omnium. So Every year we've changed the format a little bit, but this year we have a three-race Omnium, so it'll be two point series races in Milwaukee, as well as a grand finale right downtown Chicago. And in Milwaukee this year, we have a new race we're bringing on on um, Thursday before the Omnium races, so that'll be like a pre-Omnium race. So it actually will be three races in a row uh, on a Thursday, Friday, Saturday in Milwaukee in June, and then following up with the grand finale in July in downtown Chicago. Tell us about the history of the race and, and how it kind of, uh, the first time I heard about it was last year whenever, you know, State was there and like MASH SF was there. And, and, yeah, we uh, started very organically. We, we work closely with um, the organizers of the Intelligentsia Cup. So one thing that's interesting is we're the first USAC uh, sanctioned fixed gear criterium in the country. And that was, that was accomplished by partnering closely with, uh, the Intelligentsia Cup and the organizers there. So we were able to convince the local organizers in um, at the Chicago race that not only is this uh, a very viable but uh, another safe mode of racing, there's a little bit of skepticism the first year we did it, obviously. But like I said, it's, it's five years old. The first year was a pretty modest turnout. But every year we've grown uh, bigger and bigger. And like you said, last year we had – um, State Bicycle came out and pretty much dominated the uh, the series, both men's and women's. But they had re- raced the previous year as well. And one of the unique things about the Fixation Open is because we are partnered with a large, two large Criterium Road Series that we have uh, international competitors from around the world that are racing in these uh, Criterium races. So Cat One Two Pro Criterium racers that are also very accomplished on the track. So the last two years, Amelia. Emil Abraham has come out and, you know, he's a world renowned track cyclist. Um, very, very won tons of races internationally and he's competed year after year. And he gives, uh, he gave Addison a run for his money last year and the year before. Tell us about the courses. So we have four courses. Um, Shorewood is a four corner Omnium course, all about a mile long per lap. So we do a, it's a timed event uh, between 30 and 45 minutes, depending on the venue. Um, and basically racers will, will race just the same way as a road format. So you're, you know, you start the race, it's time 30 to 45 minutes. And once we have a, a basic lap time down, we'll start counting down um, with 10 laps to go. So riders know exactly how many laps they have to go and can start strategizing. 
Uh, our most interesting course actually is the Bayview race, and all of the race courses are available to preview at fixationopen.com, so you can actually get some uh, lowdown on what each course is, it looks like and a little description as well. But Bayview is a seven-turn course, so that and it doubles back on itself in a, in a not quite a hairpin, but almost a hairpin turn, and doubles back on the crowd twice, so spectators get to, you know, really, really view the racers a couple times, which makes it exciting. And one of the other things that's neat about the Fixation Open, because the, we are embedded into larger criterium races, we get huge crowds with uh, Downer Avenue being our biggest with over 10,000 spectators. That's amazing. So people can show up and kind of really get a feel for <laughs> having all those spectators there and get that energy. Yeah, it's it's a vibe that's that's really hard to you know, hard to meet Downer Avenue. We've got a, uh, and Chicago for that matter. We have a, there's a jumbotron professional announcers. We've actually had live streaming in the past. Um, so by being embedded with these bigger races, the riders themselves get an experience that they don't get to get at other events. That's awesome. Yeah. Give the pitch for people that have never been to Milwaukee and why they should come out and do this race. So, like I said, Milwaukee, you have a chance to race three days in a row. Um, the Fixation Open is just that. It's an open event. So, even if you're, you know, relatively new to fixed gear criteriums, if you're not a Cat 1, 2, or pro racer, you're going to be racing with um, really the top top of the class. So, you get to race in an open class. So, no matter your skill level, you can compete with some of the biggest names out there in fixed gear criterium racing. Um Milwaukee is a super accessible city. We have three races that are um, two of which are downtown locations. So you're, you're racing in a very dynamic environment. Um, we're close to Chicago. So it's really easy to come in and out of the city. We do have racers coming from all over the country and internationally to this event. So this event has grown um, significantly over the last few years and the competition's amazing. But like I said, you, no matter your skill level, uh, you get to race with some of the best racers out there in a very safe format, you know, we, we will stage pro one, two riders, uh, in the front of the pack. So they tend to get off a little bit in front and riders who have a chance to kind of compete with them. And we've had two years ago in Chicago, we actually had a cat three road and track racer finish in third place, right behind two pros that were, they were teammates. So he, he held his own in there and then eventually, uh, the two team pros kind of, strategize and we're able to drop them but it wasn't until like the last lap and then the last race of the series is easy that's chicago right downtown we are uh, just located right across from goose island brewery uh kind of on the north side of the city so you're literally racing in the shadows of downtown chicago and that's that's an extremely fun event tell us uh, some of your favorite stories from the from past races and what you're looking forward to this year well, one of the unique things about the Fixation Open, like I said, we do have pro riders who are coming in from all over the country. So several years in a row, um, Ash Dubin actually borrowed a bike from us two years ago and went on to win the series on a borrowed bike. And so one of the things that we do offer for some of our pro one, two riders is we do have bikes available to borrow. So if they're in town and they might not have the track bike with, with them, they'll pick one up from us. And we've had several racers uh, win on borrowed fixation bikes and we've had we've had them win on our steel models but it, it kind of goes to show sometimes it's the the bike but uh it's not always the bike it's the rider but we uh two years ago emil abraham he was in town and he actually won the series uh actually won two of the races in milwaukee on a borrowed east side uh and the very next year we had another com competitor come in from Columbia. Amelia had raced the race before, so he brought his own bike the next year. But that same borrowed bike went out in the course with uh, Columbia's track champion, and he bested Emil on the bike that Emil had borrowed last year. That was one of that was one of my personal highlights. Last year was interesting too. We had uh, at the Bayview race, um, Addison Zalata from State Bicycle was out, and he had early on, maybe it was the first or second lap, you know, you're talking a 30 minute race. Usually competitors pace themselves, find out what the other riders are capable of. And as most of your listeners know, you know, once you get going on a track bike, I mean, if 
it's it's hard to it's not like a road bike where you can kind of strategize you you have your pace you have your cadence but Addison got out of the gate first or second lap he pulls a big lead off the pack and that is super difficult to maintain especially on a track bike and he was able to put a big distance on the pack and held it off the entire race to the astonishment of the entire crowd and and even after talking to Addison after the race he he didn't know what he did. He got out in front. Didn't mean to do that because he knew it was a lot of work. And he was somehow <laughs> able to pull it off. And it was wild because the next day, all the buzz was, we're not letting Addison get away. And, and the next day, the, the crowd didn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. What are you looking forward to this year? Uh, this year's super exciting. Like I said, it's our fifth year. We're adding a new race in Milwaukee. So we have three days of racing here with a grand finale in Chicago. Um, we already have some of our, our past teams signed up as well, states back again, as well as some of our international competitors. So we're really looking forward to the biggest uh, race in the Omnium series. Um, we have new sponsors this year, and we're just looking forward to uh, another great, great Omnium and series of racing, both in Milwaukee and Chicago. Yeah, do you want to shout out some of the sponsors and who makes the race happen? Yeah, so obviously we couldn't do it without uh, Intelligentsia Cup and Tour of America's Dairyland. They, uh, they've they supported the racing from the beginning. Um, team Sports, Tom Schuler of Team Sports has been a big part of it, as well as um, this year we're bringing back Kodiak Cakes. They sponsored us last year, and they're going to do so again. Uh, and that's that was terrific because we're able to, you know, with that type of sponsorship, we're able to increase pr- prize money and premiums and just give more back to the racers who make the effort to come out and, and do the event. Tell people the dates again and where they can find you. Sure. If, so you can find out all the details at fixationopen.com. That's fixation with a Y. Uh, the racing starts off in Milwaukee um, in June. First race is June 28th in the Shorewood neighborhood, just north of the city. Then we have June 29th will be Bayview, right downtown, and June 30th, Downer Avenue, which is probably the best attended race of the entire series. Uh, the finale will be held in Chicago um, uh, in July. End of July. Um, sorry, I got to pull the date. Uh, but that'll that, that'll wrap up our final final race of the series. And registration is open and through, uh, and you do register through USAC. So there's links on our at fixationopen.com. You can find out all the registration details and please sign up. One, one thing we, we are really trying to encourage uh, a larger women's field this year. So if any racers out there know uh, women interested in participating, we would love to get them pre-signed up for the race. Well, Hey, thanks for taking time to do this, Nick. Absolutely. It's my pleasure. My name is Luis Suarez. Um, I'm the series director for SoCal Fix Series. Um, some people kind of know me as OC Breakless from the races that I started before SoCal Fix Series. Um, I'm 30 years old. Uh, I live here in Southern California. I love bikes. I love my family. And I tend to skateboard from time to time. So how did uh, the SoCal Fix Series start? It started about three years ago. Um, we were kind of chit-chatting around, um, I believe it was myself, um, Manny from GLK, um, and, um, Luis, uh, Luis Escajeda from, um, well, she, now it's Majestic Mobbin, but before it was Mobbin Monday, um, which are kind of like some of like the more influential, um, I guess like figureheads aside from like Don from Wolfpack. You know, these are these are some of the guys that when I was starting to organize races, you know, these guys were putting on, you know, some of the best races, you know, in the underground, you know, fixie scene over here. And we just kind of talked about it and we were like, who can we bring in? Like, it would be awesome to just kind of have like our own series where we just kind of all of our races that we do, we just put them together and people can go and race in San Diego with Dos Yantas. You know, they can race um, over near like Palos Verdes with um, Rat Pack Racing. And then, you know, we can take you to all of these different places. So we basically got all of us together 
and um, we put together our race calendar. And like at that time, it was like six races, and there was like one every month. I think one particular, I think one particular month we had two races like back to back, and it was awesome, man. Like everybody just kind of went out, especially like for the San Diego one, because majority of everybody here is based like in the LA OC area and um you know there's people in Long Beach and the valley so you know area over here is like it's pretty stacked for races and, and turnout and everything but San Diego we don't normally go down that way usually just because it's a little bit further but like we literally brought everybody down there for the race and like we had like a blast um so it's kind of like it's kind of been like this huge community building together to kind of make it uh, what it is today. So let's talk about that progression to from that first season to last season. It seemed like there was a bunch of really great talent that came out as well last season. And then now going into this season, there's been some changes, right? As far as, uh, you know, having insurance <laughs> and yeah, uh, dude. yeah, let's talk about that. Yeah, so we numbers like as soon as like the series start uh, started, um, attendance was like was huge. Um, when we did the season opener, um, you know, we had around 130 people there to race. You know, men, women, everybody was racing. Like we had a stacked field for for both categories, and there was just this huge amount of growth. And um, from last year. Um, our first race, uh, we had about 153 riders competing, um, and that was in our three different categories. Uh, we have an attack category, which is basically like our entry level, kind of like the uh, people that want to get their feet wet into racing, uh, but usually get pulled from like a regular, like a red hook or a mission crit or something. Mm -hmm. um, so it's we we wanted to make it something that's accessible for younger riders and newcomers just to kind of enjoy racing and, you know, maybe get a whole race out of it, depending on their fitness, or at least get more than a few laps, because it's kind of a bummer if you spend a lot of money or time to get over there to the race, and then, like, all you get is, like, a few laps out of it. Like, I, I wanted people to have a little bit longer of an experience um, with racing and everything, just to kind of get the bug and the itch to kind of race and do it again. Um so we came up with that category and then also I like I just wanted a way to um kind of lift up and uh kind of put those newer that new generation um you know up on the podium and, and get them recognized and you know get them stoked on riding so that they keep at it um because so much of this depends on you know the next generation coming in you know because we get older like all these fixies that have been out for as long as they have been, you know, eventually we kind of get old and there needs to be a new generation that's going to carry it to the next, you know, to the next place. Um, so we have that category. We have our women's category, which is super stacked with some awesome writers. Um, and I, I honestly think that's probably the most um, tight knit and like welcoming of, of the groups. Like all, all the categories are super welcoming, but like, you can tell like it's kind of like a, a just really fun competitive atmosphere with the women's category so like i really get stoked when they when they race and everything um and then we have what's called like the elite category um which is basically the the top dogs of the bunch for the men's the men's field i mean we have a ton of strong legs and that's kind of where some of the international um riders come in and dudes from across the country are coming over from the east coast and canada and mexico um, just to kind of race our races but um, just to kind of go back is like we literally had such a huge turnout um, for Huntington Beach specifically which was the season opener um, I don't know how but it ended up showing as like the number one thing to do that weekend and we're in like an underground race series like we're not supposed to be on these like OC weekly top things to do you know <laughs> so it, it was like holy crap like this is gnarly like i don't know how this happened but okay um and we ended up getting contacted after our first race from the city of huntington beach and they were like hey congratulations on your race um but we kind of need you to do this 
the right way. We kind of need you to get permits and things. Otherwise, we're going to come at your next phase and we're going to start repossessing. Um, we're going to start repossessing bikes. Um, so we were like, holy crap, what do we do? What do we do? So we kind of had a meeting um, with basically all the all the figureheads of fixed gear racing down here in Southern California. And I kind of told them more or less the situation and what we kind of needed to do um, in order to make this work. And so I came up with an alternate it's like an alter ego on Facebook and it was like private events, uh, private event invites. And I didn't list the address on the Facebook event page. Like it was in the description and you ha it, was, it was really, really secretive basically because we didn't want to get shut down again. And I didn't know how they figured out all that information, like how the city of Huntington Beach knew about it and all that. So I was like, I need to protect myself and kind of protect the series because we're still underground and we can't really afford we can't really afford permits and all that you know at our current status um so everything went super underground and it still worked out really well but with the steady growth and like excitement uh, over it it was kind of necessary to you know go the legitimate route especially after like being on espn sports center like last year like we were like, okay, like we really, really need to be legit now. Like this is on like a nationwide scale. Like we kind of need to, we kind of need to buckle down and, and do this the right way for 2018. Yeah. So what are we looking forward to this year as far as like, what are the courses looking like? Uh, what are the big changes that people can expect? And yeah. Yeah, dude. Um, we are having all three dates um at this college called mount san antonio college um it's located in walnut california and they were super interested in like just kind of helping out grassroots cycling and kind of what we're doing and so they've kind of allowed us to rent out their largest parking lot and like their lot is humongous and so we are literally renting that thing and it's like freshly paved super nice no potholes no cracks no nothing like it's rad and um, we're going to be able to design the whole course custom um, which is going to be cool because when I used to do it the other way we would normally just do it like at a business complex um, on the weekend so whatever the streets were is pretty much the way that the course was um, so there wasn't too much as far as like deviation could go because we can't go the opposite way of traffic since cars are still coming on the weekends. Um, so I'm able to make the courses much more technical, um, but I always have this philosophy that things should be technical, but there really should be a good flow of everything because I like to, I like to see every other stuff and I like to see fun events and I feel like it makes, it makes it more exciting for anybody to be So I try to find line between technical and flowy um, so that everybody can kind of keep it competitive and keep the race exciting and kind of keep the spectators engaged uh, with everything. Um, as far as kind of what to expect or what, as far as like changes will go, pretty much the changes are right there just in the course. Um, you're going to see different course layouts for each race. It's going to be fun and exciting every single time. Um, the good part is, is that my goal is to be able to do all of this and still make it as affordable as all of our races have been in the past. Um, so it's still $10 to race. So you pay 10 bucks and you still get insured coverage and you get a safe course and everything's closed off and we don't have to worry about being shut down or anything. Um, so that's kind of the big highlight. And then we're obviously going to have a little more cash to play with. Um, so we'll have a nice cash spot for the men's and women's fields and everything's going to be equal. Um, so we're going to make sure that the women are celebrated just as much as the men and everybody is super, super stoked at the end of it. So who was on the podium last year and, and who are you looking forward to see racing this year? Man. Um, so hopefully we can have, uh, we can have Sydney. Uh, back. I know she's kind of dealing with some back issues, and so I'm really hoping to 
to see her there. Um, but also um, on the women's side is uh, Asia Morris because she's our she was actually our first our first year series champ, and um, she kind of took a little bit of a break last year, and so it's been really great to see her back on the bike and racing and kind of training and everything so i'm really really excited to see what she does because her and evelyn are literally like probably one of the best teams that like i've seen uh together like they are like a one-two punch and at any point it could be either one of them winning a race um so i'm definitely looking forward to seeing them and then i think on the men's um elite side um I really, really like uh, Team Thrones chances um, since we have um, we have like Manuel Vara and we have uh, Jerry Rios and then they also got Steven um, from GLK and so they're all like old friends from GLK so seeing them all together it's going to be like a great, great dynamic and I know that uh, Vara is really, really going to want um, some redemption after last year because he lost out on the series win uh, to add Addison Zawada. So it'll be really interesting to see what they do this year because, um, you know, Barra's been doing a great job and so is Rios. Um, they've really kind of been, like, on the podium at every local race that we have over here. Um, so they're really, really killing it. But then, of course, you have now, you kind of have Addison being the team manager. He's able to kind of orchestrate where the team can go and what races to race and everything so i do know that state is going to be coming um with some with some backup so it's not just going to be addison by himself uh we should be seeing a few of the guys there at one time so um seeing their team tactics and everything could uh definitely uh throw a wrench in that for everybody let's talk about the dates and the details for folks that want to come to the races yeah, man. Um, we have made it pretty easy for everybody. Um, so it's 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 the last Sunday of every month, beginning in May. Uh, so we have May 27th. Uh, we also have June 24th and July 19th. That'll be our series finale. Um, so all those take place on a Sunday. Uh, we've kind of found that Sundays seem to be the best day for everybody because a lot of people don't seem to be working. So uh, it'll work out pretty nice for everybody we're hoping um <clears throat> and then if you kind of want like an idea of just like the time frames and everything for everybody um we have uh we're kind of doing pre-reg um if you have to register day of um that's not a problem uh we're gonna have that start at 11 and then uh if you're racing the attack category um so that'll be at about 12:15. Um, and the women's race will take place at one uh, fifteen, and then the elite race will take place at 2.15. The time can fluctuate a little bit just depending on how the race goes because uh, generally each, each category is pretty much racing a 45-minute race, and then once the 45 minutes is elapsed, uh, we'll go with five laps to go after that. So you're looking at about an hour race or more, um, and then I'm going to try to give each category the opportunity to have about 10 minutes um, just to kind of test out the course and kind of get their bearings. This way we don't have any crazy wrecks right off the bat once everything starts. Um, so that's kind of the idea uh, for the race schedule. And then of course, we have the Southern Californian staple of fixed gear racing, which is the craft beer podium. And uh, that's going to take place at about 4 p.m. after all the races are over. Are there any plans to live stream the race? We are working on it. Um, I know that there's going to be like a few people for sure, um, you know, kind of live streaming on their Instagram. I'll likely give the reins of the, the SoCal Fix Series Instagram uh, for them to kind of live stream on there. Um, we're kind of, we're still exploring as far as like something a little more high def, the kind of where we could do it like on YouTube and everything. Um, it's a little bit of a tough task, um, but we want to make sure that whoever is, kind of broadcasting knows the racers and you know we'll be able to talk about these guys and what they've what they've done in the past you know like i'm a big fan i'm a dodger fan so like i'm a huge fan of vin scully so somebody that knows these people knows you know hey like this dude likes the 
color purple and this is why he picked his frame and all this <laughs> stuff and this guy won won this race a long time ago and this guy used to be a scene kid for sure we'll we'll have some more details kind of on that on our event pages um we're supposed to launch the event pages i believe today or tomorrow um and then of course our website socalfixseries.com that's going to have all the details there and registration um so we'll have some info as far as like live stream and stuff so we'll try to make it as exciting as we can so people outside of socal can enjoy the race cool and yeah and to everybody out there we'll be uh covering uh the races on the podcast uh with recaps afterwards so we'll keep people informed and get those stories out there (laughs) yes yes we appreciate everything you're doing dude like honestly there's so many stories and so many people that you know have like a yearning to hear all these stories and and learn about you know their riders that they wouldn't have heard otherwise you know most of most of the people they only have like kind of what's on instagram to go off of but you kind of dive in a little bit deeper and you know we really get a sense of the person you know at the end of these episodes so you definitely definitely thank you like i i know you probably don't get to hear it too often from everybody but i know everybody over here you know at least in southern california and my friends and everything you know we love the podcast and you know we talk about it a lot so definitely appreciate what you're doing man hey that's really nice to hear you know (laughs) it's good to hear that because you know sometimes you're just like putting in all this work and it's it's uh nice to hear that people are listening and enjoying it and and that I and I just am happy that I can get out all the stories and help promote the races and stuff. So I just love the sport, and I think that it's I don't know people like you guys, the race organizers, and all that stuff, just like trying to get the word out. It's it's yeah, I think it's really important for people to have that kind of stuff in their communities. So I appreciate what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. It's it, it, you know, it's good. It's good to hear. It, you know, like it, it's good to tell people. You know, when they're doing a good job. Do you have anything else you want to say before we head out? Um, you know, other than everything that we kind of talked about, you know, I just tell your friends. Honestly, uh, this kind of grows and and dies, you know, based on word of mouth and people coming out. So I hope people can come support it. And you know, if you can't make it, you know, just kind of follow us on Instagram at SoCalFix Series. And uh, you can get all the info on live streams and all of our coverage and everything that we have going on. Um, that's pretty much it, you know. I just hope everyone's going to have a good time. And, you know, let me know, you know, if there's anything you want to see in the series and, and what we can do in the future. Yeah. Oh, and remind us of the date of the first race. It's May 27th. Yeah. May 27th. And is registration Friday. open already? It is going to be live. Um, I, w- I want to say Wednesday, so depending on when this comes out, it may be live already, but uh, we'll, we'll have it up for everybody. I sh- it should be this week. Cool. Well, hey, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Yeah, dude, thanks for having me, man. I really appreciate it. All right, that does it for another episode of Save the Track Bike. Thank you so much for tuning in. Shout out to our sponsors at Hexagon Cycles, hexagoncycles.com. Use the code STTB if you buy anything to help support the podcast. Also, if you want to support the podcast, go leave us a review on iTunes. Go to our store and buy some t-shirts or a hat or something like that. You can find that at savethetrackbike.com. You can follow us on Instagram at savethetrackbike. The music is Slag Girl by Vitamin Pets. Shoutouts to fixgearcrit.com. All right, we'll see you next time.